Thank you very much for, uh, for inviting me here. Uh, this conference is awesome. And uh, I'm very happy to give this talk uh, in this very nice palindrome date. Nice. Uh, I'm Giacomo Zucco. I have been already introduced. Uh, I, uh, now I am CEO of uh, Blockchain Lab. Just one minute to tell you what, uh, okay, if somebody is uh, sick for the Prezi movement, just use uh, the vomit sex uh, bags uh, next to the chairs. Uh, this is what we do. Uh, basically, we uh, take money from the financial incumbents, banks, insurance, and other kind of people. We use this money to fund and help development over Bitcoin. A few years ago, when we started, we were saying blockchain in order to have a better marketing, but now we are more honest about that. Uh, we basically do only stuff about Bitcoin uh, and we use this money to uh, have this project. In return, we get knowledge from these uh, experts and we use the knowledge for consultancy. So this is what we do. What I'm going to talk uh, uh, about today is not technical or uh, business, is, uh, is basically politics. Um, I'm talking about political attack vectors on Bitcoin and common political misconception. Just to start, uh, one minute to review the fact that, in my opinion, which is right, uh, <laughs> uh, Bitcoin is uh, not merely a technical event, but is mainly a political event. Uh, with this, I mean uh, that uh, Bitcoin is uh, the, fr the, the fruit, the final fruit, the final outcome of a process that was mainly political in its origins uh, and also Bitcoin introduces some changes that are mainly political or and economical more than technological uh, in itself. Uh, of course I don't have to explain to you here I mean, this conference is organized by Institute of Crypto Anarchy, the roots of uh, all the work that led to Bitcoin finally, so the Crypto Anarchy Manifesto and Team May and everything, the cypherpunk culture, uh, mix it up with some other political culture like uh, uh, libertarianism, uh, gold bugs, uh, Austrian economics, uh, uh, free banking. So there is a, a huge mixtures, mixture of uh, political, even uh, Milton Friedman, usually I play, the, I play the video, but I'm sure that you were all on Tom Vey's presentation, so you have already seen the video. Uh, the, the sentence is awesome. Milton Friedman predicting basically Bitcoin. I think that the internet is going to be one of the major forces for reducing the role of government. The one thing that's missing, but that will soon be developed, is a reliable e-cash, a method whereby on the internet you can transfer funds from A to B without A, without a knowing B or B knowing A. Yeah, it's possible. And also, in the Genesis block, we have politics. We have uh, an explicit reference from Satoshi Nakamoto to an economical political event, a bank bailout just after the global financial crisis uh, caused by monetary policies and stuff like that. So it's, uh, it's undisputable that uh, Bitcoin origins are political. Uh, also, the specific technological uh, piece missing uh, in the puzzle that Bitcoin added to the previous set of technology is not really technological or cryptographical, mathematical, it's mostly game theory and in a way politics. Uh, we started with, uh, I mean, uh, P2P uh, distributed uh, uh, databases and open source technology, uh, already eCash and the digital signature, so this, uh, Bitcoin didn't invent digital signature. Bitcoin didn't invent proof of work, neither transferable proof of work already present in the B-Money concept in 98 by Wei Dai. Uh, so what Bitcoin introduced was a, a way to put, to take the chronology of the transaction, put it inside the proof of work, and in this way uh, to create um, an economical and political incentives to have one single consistent, consistent and immutable uh, chronology of uh, all the uh, uh, all the alteration of the of the database. So it's a, basically a, a, an economical political innovation. This is just the introduction, uh, the introduction to. Uh, to say that somebody may think that the origin, uh, the origins are political, but the implication are mostly renormalized to just business and technical implication. I mean, many internet innovation were highly ideological at first, but now they are just used to do normal business and they, they've lost 
much of, the, of their political charge. Uh, I do think that uh, Bitcoin will not uh, intrinsically lose much of its political potential because many of the things that can be brought up by this technology are intrinsically game changers uh, from a political point, point of view. They cannot be anything else. Uh, renormalization of uh, this technology under political status quo is technically very uh, in, unlikely uh, be, because, uh, I mean, uh, you, you all know that uh, a centralized blockchain or a private blockchain, permissioned blockchain, these things, that doesn't make any sense. So, uh, of, of course, uh, here I use Trezor, but if I give this talk in Paris, I will use a ledger here. So. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, or, or in Switzerland, we use a uh, digital bit. I'm joking. Uh, so, uh, there, I'm talking now about political, uh, political uh, vect attack vectors, technical sabotage, political ban, political normalization, and politicized hijacking. The first one is uh, something that I will not discuss at length because you all know about that. Uh, many of these political scenarios, political attack scenarios, were discussed yesterday during the uh, Fox of Crypto, Crypto Wars uh, talk. So the government want to stop this technology. So the government or the governments or the central banks or the commercial banks controlled by the government or the tax agencies or the or the uh, SEC or whatever, they try to stop the technology hacking it, uh, violating it, putting backdoor into it. This is not really uh, easy to do in Bitcoin. This has been done uh, at, uh, at length with internet itself. Internet is not very secure from uh, uh, political actor attacks. Uh, you think about centralization of DNS, centralization of uh, uh, ISP. Internet is quite vulnerable to that. Uh, you can shut down uh, websites in Catalonia, you can basically uh, shut down all internet in uh, North Korea, so you can do stuff there. With Bitcoin, people are starting more wary than people was during the first internet development. So people here is more uh, thinking adversarially. So I, I think that the, the eventuality of a technical attack on Bitcoin as is, is not really, uh, I mean, it's something probably comparable or less dangerous than what already happened with the internet, which is still pretty, uh, a pretty game-changing, uh, even if compromised in many ways, internet is pretty uh, much a game-changing technology from a social and political point of view. So let's move to the second kind of political attack. I don't hack it, I just ban it. Uh, governments will start to coordinate to ban Bitcoin. This is, first of all, uh, this is an image of a prohibition of, uh, of alcohol and used here to, to represent the fact that even if you ban alcohol in all the United States, uh, the price of alcohol goes up. Uh, yesterday in the Fox of Crypto, Crypto War uh, talk, uh, Smuggler said that is likely the opposite, but I, I think still that when you prohibit, usually the price goes up of the good. Anyway, uh, this is difficult to do because uh, many different governments have, have to coordinate and because many governments already committed to, to some kind of uh, uh, legitimization of Bitcoin. For example, US Marshall sold Bitcoin from Silk Road and whatever to people. Uh, they didn't sell uh, drugs, just Bitcoin. Uh, in common law, it's not super easy to revert these. Possible, because they can do the, what they want, but not super easy. Uh, my point is that if you ban Bitcoin, uh, like you ban drugs, uh, you, or you, uh, like you can ban alcohol, you don't really destroy it. Probably you destroy my company, you destroy the inter exchanges, uh, research, uh, startups, uh, the interfaces, but not the technology itself, which is anyway have been uh, have been born just for that, just to be, just for, to be resistant to that. If it's not possible for uh, for it to resist, uh, it's pointless. All the uh, technical complexity of Bitcoin is just to avoid this scenario. There is a, another scenario in which that I call uh, political renormalization, in which uh, I don't hack Bitcoin, I don't ban Bitcoin. But I try to renormalize Bitcoin. I try to get people to stop using the uh, the disruptive, politically disruptive feature, uh, and I and I slowly uh, let them think that this is actually the opposite of the other scenario. Bitcoin is so legal 
that you don't need censorship resistance anymore. I mean, everybody can operate in a clear light in the, of the day, so uh, why not blacklist addresses? Why not centralize mining a little bit? I mean, you don't need full nodes. Uh, you don't need to go over Tor. Uh, just use optical fiber. Everything is normal. Uh, so, finally, you can use Bitcoin, uh, except that nothing uh, disruptive, uh, politically disruptive in Bitcoin is still uh, surviving anymore. This is not a strategy that, uh, uh, this strategy does exist. People is trying to push for that. There are startups, uh, startup CEOs that are pushing for a KYC on, uh, on Bitcoin or uh, uh, maybe even from a, uh, you know, Bitcoin is disruptive mainly from uh, two point of, points of view. Uh, censorship resistance, I can spend my money wherever I want. Privacy is just a part of censorship resistance because if I spend my money and I pay WikiLeaks and I can do that, but then you come to my house and you put me in prison, that's ex post censorship because uh, I, you will prevent me to do that again and other people to do that in the future. So that's another form of, of uh, post facto uh, censorship. The second one is uh, uh, sound monetary policy, which is different, uh, which is something concerning more maybe the central banks uh, because uh, it's changing the, the, the usual way to do monetary manipulation, basically. Uh, these two characteristics of Bitcoin could be changed uh, by the renormalization, for example, uh, I don't know how many of you watch Mr. Robot, there is the E-Corp, evil guy in bed with the government, and he says, yeah, Bitcoin is too free, we will launch an alternative which uses the same technology but is controlled by us uh, as monetary policy or as uh, financial uh, tracking and financial control. Uh, this is possible, unlikely. Uh, I mean, you can do that in two different ways. One way is the uh, is the uh, permission and blockchain uh, sorry permission and blockchain nonsense, uh, and uh, that's that's a way. I I I I I tell people that this is a new technology. It's not. This is a new way to use the existing technology in a new disruptive political fashion and economical fashion. The other way is to create a fake cryptocurrency that you can actually discuss about uh, with uh, Vladimir Putin uh, because you control it entirely, you can do bailouts, you can do everything you want, you just walk in the garden with Vladimir and, and you discuss. Uh, this is another renormaliz political renormalization. I mean, uh, people talking about uh, this kind of fake cryptocurrencies, they don't talk about censorship resistance very much. I mean, the point is the technology, right? We want to do, uh, we want to do shiny new uh, startup-like things. We just want to buy Lambos, creating new apps because that's that's. Uh, we just want to have fun. Uh, we don't have to. We, we don't want to have the gloomy, libertarian, uh, aggressive uh, uh, approach uh, where everybody is trying to to get to us. We are just happy people playing with state uh, rich statefulness. Uh, so this is one. I don't think that this kind of attack is, uh, is very worrying because uh, you face this problem. This technology is useless if not used for its intended, its intended purpose. So this is uh, a traditional trust-based system uh, driven by horses. This is a first automobile, so this is Bitcoin. Of course, it's not perfect. It smells, it can, uh, the, the engine can explode. But this is called a Uber wagon. So basically, during the Great Depression, the people took uh, uh, engine out of the car and they put uh, horses there and the men here. Uh, this is, I mean, this can work. This stuff can go. Uh, it's not that it doesn't work. It just doesn't make a lot of sense because uh, it's very heavy for the horses and it's not very comfortable for the men driving there. Uh, it was not started for that. The car was started to be a car with all its pros and cons. So let's move, uh, and parental advisory here, let's move to another kind of a atta political attack. This was a political attack called renormalization in which I tried to instill into Bitcoin something that was politically at odds with original Bitcoin, uh, let's call it ideology. So Bitcoin is about privacy, what about KYC? Bitcoin is about uh, sound money, what about inflation? Uh, so I'm just trying to counteract the ideology. What if instead I try to 
completely follow the, uh, the ideology, the libertarian, sound money, free market, uh, censorship resistant ideology of Bitcoin, and they try to hijack that to distort, to manipulate that ideology in a way in which uh, I will not seek support from uh, some socialist uh, professor at Cornell University, but I will seek support from libertarians and free market champions and uh, maybe anar crypto anarchists at, uh, at crypto anarchy institutes. Uh, what if I can twist some libertarian ideas uh, in order to have a political attack uh, uh, driven by that side, the internal political hijack. Uh, sorry, I had to do this. Uh, this is a this is a this is a cover slide for the political hijack attacks. Uh, of course, what I'm about to say here uh, is an uh, alert. Team foil hat alert. Uh, this could be an attack that is happening now. But even if you think that I'm crazy, that I'm paranoid, that I'm, uh, that I'm a conspiracy theorist, and this is not happening now, not in maybe in an organized way, that's completely possible. What I'm saying here is that this kind of attack could happen. It could happen completely driven by the side, or it could grow internally, organically, or it could start internally and be somehow uh, triggered or amplified or used or leveraged by external entities. So even if you think that this is not happening now and everything I'm saying now is not anywhere related with, related with a coordinated attack, let's just imagine that this is a possible political attack surface that could be more dangerous actually than the other one because the the uh, the, the, the distance between bitcoin and the statist uh, centralist policies is so clear that this technology is not going anywhere anywhere with normalization why well, this attack is more subtle uh, so i think that this uh, this guy, oh of course this attack will not try to uh, change Bitcoin in a way that it directly loses its characteristic. But it could be, if, uh, I mean, it could be possibly, theoretically, a way to facilitate after a technical sabotage. So uh, if I am a part of this attack, I will tell we need KYC on Bitcoin. If I am part of this attack, I will, I will just say, in order to have free market, we have to change all the core devs and then we have to finish with uh, one implementation that connects with the nodes of three companies in order to bootstrap. And so we get back to technical sabotage facilitated by the internal political sabotage. Uh, convoluted, complex, unrealistic, probably, I don't know. Maybe I'm, I just like conspiracy theories. Uh, so I think that there are two main uh, political misconceptions that can be used in order to perform or trigger or amplify this kind of attack in theory. And they are actually uh, on, the, on the different, end, in different ends of the same spe spectrum. Uh, it's an interesting because they are paradoxically used at the same time, but they are actually very, very far apart as a concept. The first kind of political uh, misconception is uh, the market versus central planning. Uh, core devs are socialist central planners because they want to decide on a single re on a single repo. They want to decide how Bitcoin must must work, while every characteristic of the software ma must emerge from the free market. I mean, we are all crypto anarchists. We are free marketeers. We don't want central planning. Uh, this is a very powerful argument, especially for people that is not so strong about political science. And uh, it's, uh, it can be suggestive for a, uh, I mean, a prima facie libertarian guy. Yeah, I mean, I want free market. Why I should listen to a central planner like Bitcoin Core developers, uh, which uh, will be, of course, a centralized hierarchical organization. Of course, it's not. Uh, the thing that the misconception here, uh, sorry, this picture is not very, uh, it sucks because I took it from, from distance, but this was about the speech uh, yesterday, uh, the speech about positive libertarianism, I don't know if, if the speaker is here, but it was very, very nice. Uh, and there was this part of the speech that was, the market is an abstraction. Uh, there are people and companies working on innovation. There, uh, the market do, do, does not solve any problems. People do. 
the uh, the resulting interaction are, uh, are interactions are then called the market. By saying market will solve this, you mean other people. What about you? Uh, so this is a nice concept, right? The market is not something that happens without anybody taking responsibility to try to create, propose, assume leadership, uh, do something. Uh, the market doesn't exist in a purely entropic state where everybody is a, just a crazy partisan without any kind of organization. The, 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 the trade-off is not between uh, order and statism and violence and uh, free market and uh, crazy, crazy cows. That's not the trade-off. The trade-off is uh, uh, violent order or chaos versus uh, peaceful order and uh, voluntary order and chaos. Actually, the market is every kind of uh, system with free interaction, no coercion and not aggression. Uh, from this is usually always emerge, uh, there is an emergent consensus from this, which is usually uh, some leadership, authority, spiritual, philosophical, there is some uh, specialization, division of labor. N nobody can do everything. You must rely on something, something else, someone else doing the stuff better because that's how you can actually improve and build a society. Uh, uh, transactional cost minimization. I don't know if you are familiar with Ronald Coase. Ronald Coase say, uh, is, the, is the economist that, that won the Nobel Prize studying how from a free market, something like f a firm, a company, which is not free. Inside the company I have contracts, I have rules, I have, uh, I have uh, hierarchies. The reason it, it, it is born is that it uh, lowers transactional cost. So in the free market there are emergent high, uh, islands of uh, order and hierarchy and organization. Uh, also coordination. When we want to coordinate for language, protocol, we do create some kind of restriction uh, of our liberty is not a violent restriction is a market based restriction of the of all the degrees of liberty uh, degrees of freedom of course what's it, what is what's keeping this system honest and and what keeps this system from ge degenerating into uh, into a totalitarian uh, dystopian world is that these islands of organization they can fail they can be uh, they, they have competition from outside. I create my company, I hire wh whoever I want, but if I'm wrong, I will fail, I will pay. Skin in the game, uh, feedback loop. Uh, of course, if there is a, uh, we, uh, we are not in the market anymore, if any of these organizations start to uh, eliminate uh, uh, the, the, the external pressure with coercion of aggression. So if you have, uh, let's say, the core developers, which are not an organization, by the way, but I use the, uh, let's say you have a company working on Bitcoin, uh, that's completely legit. But if this company starts to kill uh, or to put, uh, to kidnap people uh, competing with, uh, with it, like uh, a government will do, if you compete with the government in the same territory, then you are out of the market and you are in the realm of brute force and not, not, not cryptographical brute force. Uh, so this one uh, side of the debate, and it, uh, it has some interesting, uh, interesting uh, uh, corollaries, like uh, technically emergent consensus inside the program versus artificial limits. Uh, so you know the argument here is, uh, no, one megabyte is an artificial limit. Let's, let's just the market decide. And you could, do, you could actually go on and say, uh, no, 10 minutes is an artificial limit. Let the markets decide. And you could do that with any kind of uh, piece of software because software is actually a set of limitations proposed by the author of the software. Uh, the software is a, a, an ensemble of artificial limits that are useful for your goal. Uh, what is the best? Uh, I can give you a box and I can tell you this box is so nice, this is, contains a program which is so flexible that you can do anything with it. Uh, it's more than Turing complete and stateful, uh, rich stateful. It's it, actually, you can do Facebook, you can do Google, you can do any program because it's an empty hard disk and you can actually do whatever you want because you just change the, the, the you just change uh, the, the single clusters and you can do everything. But actually it's more useful when I provide you with limitation if they are not enforced on you, if I propose the limitation to you and you choose to run that software, then it's actually not 
an artificial limit. It's a, it's a, it's a it's how software works. So this is a consequence of the first misconception. Another one, which is a completely separate uh, uh, kingdom, but is, is, uh, has been used in the same kind of debate, is free speech versus censorship. Uh, if, uh, uh, if, I have, uh, if I am a publisher of a newspaper, and you come into my office, and you pretend to use my, my, my journal, my newspaper, my newspaper, in order to publish something that I don't believe in, which is against my editorial line, or against my, my beliefs, or against reality, I, I do have to host your uh, article, otherwise I'm censoring you. Of course, this is a... Uh, this is a very serious manipulation of the word censorship. This is completely different from what usually we mean when we speak when we speak about free speech and censorship. To be fair, this kind of misconception is not, is not just uh, present inside the political Bitcoin block size whatever debate. This is a misconception which is used uh, which is used uh, in a very uh, broad way in uh, universities, uh, uh, in television. Uh, there is a lot of misconception between a situation where I prevent you from speak with your resources and your strategies and your journal and your, your uh, forum or your Reddit uh, subreddit or the, the fact that I just de decide to moderate my single channel communication the hell, uh, in, in, in what, whatever way I want. Because this is a private initiative and there is competition here. Somebody else can come out with another subreddit and maybe it will be so wonderful that everybody will leave our Bitcoin and everybody will go on our BTC, right? That's what happened when, when you have bad moderation policy and you have an alternative. Uh, or not, if it's not better. Uh, so these are two declination of this kind of political attack and this kind of misconception. There is another one, which is interestingly actually at the, at the other end of the spectrum. Uh, so the, actually the same people sometimes are saying, what's wrong with uh, one company, one guy producing all the ASICs in the world. I mean, aren't we free market capitalists? It's just normal that just one guy can compete. What do you want? Government uh, fixing quotas? Uh, are, are you a socialist? Uh, it's, it's very it's nice to have. Uh, I mean, yeah, this implementation of Bitcoin connects with nodes of uh, three companies, uh, all, uh, all participated by a single investment group. I mean, what's wrong with that? Uh, we, uh, we are changing the protocol based on a meeting of 12 people inside uh, the Hotel Marriott in New York. I mean, that's capitalism. We are CEOs, so we are free market. Uh, that's interesting because it's, as you can see, that's a completely opposite uh, spectrum, uh, but still used by the same people in my theoretical non-existent attack scenario. And, uh, and it's based on the, basically three misconceptions, three sub-misconceptions. The first one is uh, uh, the centralization, like a company, a vertical company. Okay, uh, the, cent the centralization is legit, is not against free marking. Having a market monopoly of ASICs, of everything, is completely legit from a libertarian, crypto anarchist, anarchist, uh, anarcho capitalist, whatever point of view. Uh, what, is, uh, what it is, is not uh, leg it's legit. But it's dangerous because uh, uh, it's very easy to censor and it's very easy to corrupt. So you cannot use the argument that creating a company that controls everything in Bitcoin is uh, anti-libertarian. It's not. But you can use the argument that it doesn't work because uh, it happened with uh, eCash, with eGold, with Linden dollars, with uh, PayPal when they tried to, to create their, their currency. Without decentralization, you are completely legit. You can be a free market capitalist, but it doesn't work because if you're trying to change the status quo too much, you will be censored or you will be paid off, you will be corrupt, you will be both. Uh, so this is basically also a, a misconception that, that, that comes from another misconception about what consensus really means. Uh, people, some people not very expert technically in Bitcoin, they think that Satoshi Nakamoto delivered a magical a magical trick that somehow can technically solve the governance problem and when you have to upgrade the protocol or change the rule, actually you just use the consensus. But that's completely not true. Uh, Nakamoto consensus 
is used to solve a very specific govern, governance problem, which is chronology of the transaction. Uh, the, what happens if this kind of, of consensus goes wrong? What happens is uh, double spending risk, censorship, uh, the solution is proof of work. So proof of work is the solution for the double spending problem. It's not the general solution for the rule changing problem. We don't have an automatic fair solution to this. Uh, proof of work can be both and can be both by purchased by attackers with, uh, without problems. Actually, it could happen. So. Uh, another thing is that protocol coordination is very hard to bootstrap. Uh, this is also something related with, and I, I go to finish in, in two minutes, this is also related with uh, 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 monetization and, uh, and profit. Satoshi Nakamoto could have just pre-mined Bitcoin, there was, or, or I've done an ICO for Bitcoin. There's nothing ethically wrong in that if it's, I mean, if what you create is not scam, uh, and it's, if it makes sense. But uh, the problem is that Satoshi chose not to do that because otherwise bootstrap the trust, bootstrap the network would have been extremely difficult. So we can, you cannot use the classical hierarchical company structure for everything because we are trying to bootstrap a free, open, global network. Uh, also Bitcoin may be unique, may be a, a, an experiment which is very in, uh, difficult to, if not impossible, to uh, do again if it fails. Uh, the interesting thing about the unicity of Bitcoin is that even if I'm, I, even if I'm wrong, I'm right anyway. Because, uh, the, uh, let's consider a classical objection to this. Uh, no, uh, guy, Bitcoin is not unique. Uh, we need to change Bitcoin quickly or altcoins will take over. Uh, the interesting uh, logical consequence of this sentence is that, uh, uh, incorrect, as you can read here, uh, very incorrect, because if Bitcoin is unique, then altcoin cannot take over, because it's unique. No, no, alt, uh, no alternative network can provide the same value proposition, at least in the long run. But if it's not correct and Bitcoin is easy to replace and replicate, then what's the problem? We can still not change Bitcoin, some altcoin will take over and we will be happy about that, because we will have the final value proposition that we were seeking anyway. So. This point must be considered, uh, must be considered uh, anyway uh, in the direction of conserv conservation and protection of Bitcoin. This is the last slide, uh, just to tell that these two misconceptions, I will not analyze this slide in depth, but I just want to try to give you the, 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 the suggestion about it. Uh, there are two different layers. One layer is infrastructure, networks, protocols, like languages, money, internet. In these layers, you, uh, even if you are a free market uh, anarchist, in this layer, the layer of products, service, or firms, or company, you want disruption, change, rapid change, evolution. You want competition, choice, multiplicity. Uh, you want also centralization and profit. They are completely okay. And, uh, uh, and in this different layer, the layer which is underneath, uh, actually it's a, it's a degree of course, you can have uh, uh, the, the classical example, uh, you have Candy Crash, the, the uh, Facebook game, then you have Facebook, then you have the web, then you have the, TCP, uh, the HTTP, then TCP IP. Bitcoin is down here, it's a protocol, an open infrastructure protocol, it's not a product. And when you have an open infrastructure protocol, for various, re for various reasons, you don't want change, disruption, continuous evolution, you want stability, reliability, resilience, you want cooperation and converg convergence instead of competition and multiplicity, and you cannot have easily centralization and profit, not because it's not legit, but because it doesn't work. Uh, sorry, it was a little bit longer than I expected. Uh, questions? So, thank you, Giacomo, for this insightful speech. I really like uh, its uh, Italian speed. Uh, so, what is your question? It cannot be, show me the nude again, I will yeah. not. Any questions? Yeah, there are. Thank you for a wonderful talk. 
Uh, do you think that the recent merge uh, of uh, uh, possibility to disguise S two X clients as S one X clients uh, will somehow affect uh, people's minds? Like, do you think they will wake up and see that S two X is fraud? Uh, which kind of which people? The, the people organizing these or the people the people pushing for this? The people who who think that uh, S two X is a good idea. Uh, so I think that uh, there is not a unique answer to your question. Uh, I think that there are di very different interests here. Uh, for example, I think that people with a lot of economical interest in Bitcoin ecosystem will probably uh, chicken out and save face somehow before the uh, before the disaster. Uh, while some people that has nothing to lose, uh, maybe because it has not strong commercial interest but just a reputational interest, uh, they could be incentivized to go on uh, anyway. I, I give you an example. I don't think, maybe I'm wrong, but I'm not. Oh, sorry. No, I, I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong, but I don't think that uh, before Bcash, Jian uh, Hu were really willing to uh, for to split Bitcoin because I mean it was a dangerous move for a miner to do. Uh, what happened? What happened is that after a conference, uh, some developers that I sincerely believe are not strictly related with Jian Hu, they for they decided to split anyway and with a strange, funny. Uh, a, a difficulty adjustment algorithm, and then the miners started to play with it, uh, to play games. But they, they would probably, they didn't with B, B, BXT, uh, BXT, they didn't do that with uh, B Classic, they didn't do that with uh, B Unlimited. Uh, probably they, 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 they weren't going to go uh, on with Bitcoin ABC or, or whatever. But some, somebody else did, and they started to play with it. Something similar could happen with B2X. A uh, serious company that understand that this uh, attempt to political takeover uh, has failed, I mean, if, if it was possible to succeed, they would have gone uh, over. But since it is clearly failed, they will probably step back, but maybe some developer that has, uh, uh, has bet all his reputation on this move, it will go on anyway, and some miner will play with it. So I think that the split is at this point still possible, maybe with a market cap comparable to, I don't know, ha, maybe they will play with the market cap of uh, Big Ash or something like that. Okay, uh, thanks Giacomo for the call, well, for the talk, it was a very good one. Um, my question is, uh, what can uh, the Chinese government do to corrupt the miners, for example, and perform an attack? And the other one is, uh, what can central banks do? Uh, to attack Bitcoin, for example, by printing money to buy a lot of Bitcoin and then selling them or something like that? So, uh, I think that both, uh, both uh, adversaries uh, can do something which is anyway temporary, not really long-term dam damage, but in short, short term could be a uh, huge damage. Uh, government, Chinese government can ban Bitcoin mining, for example, but that will not be really a smart move. What I suspect they are trying to do is to uh, nationalize Bitcoin mining somehow. So, uh, I mean, how many payment companies, how many, I mean, how many every kind of company do you count big ones in China? Usually one with a strong participation on the government. So that's their, their, their style of uh, uh, chronic capitalism. So it's, I mean, I don't know, I'm not an expert of China any, anyhow. So uh, I think that they will try to reopen exchanges and to uh, smoothly switch the ecosystem from a distributed one to a centralized one. Uh, the kind of attack you can perform when you have um, control over mining is basically censorship for some time and double spending of your own money. Both things can damage Bitcoin in the short term, but then the long term you just uh, put a, uh, you just give a competitive advantage to to little no Chinese miner or very little anonymous Chinese miner or miners outside China. So you just destroy what you try to control. Uh, it's like I mean, empty gox at ninety percent of the market. Uh, what can what can you do if you control empty gox? You can change the price with uh, Willy. You can do a lot of things, but eventually you will just destroy your your toy. Uh, so in the long run. I don't think that there is a, uh, even if you, I mean, uh, you are the Federal Reserve, you print money to buy uh, some trillions of Bitcoin. I mean, thank you, 
and uh, and now okay now you sell okay uh, I mean somebody the, the traders will uh, will have more Lambos and uh, and the, the holders like me they will be sad for a while and then we will wait uh, so okay uh, yeah um, in your last slide you said that um, altcoins can help with um, no the previous one. Uh, there, you say that altcoins can help with anti-fragility. Yeah. So my question is, uh, what about hard forks? Is this uh, the case? Good, good question. Um, yeah, I, I didn't spell it, but yeah, I, I put anti-fragility. Many people say that Bitcoin is anti-fragile. It's nice, it's nice to think that we also have the T-shirt. I am anti-fragility from Scaling Bitcoin Montreal. Uh, probably Bitcoin at this point is more robust than anti-fragile. Uh, the market around Bitcoin, the exchanges, the miners are anti-fragile context. The protocol itself is not anti-fragile, it is robust. If you, you cannot break it, but if you do break it, uh, you probably create a lot of long, long, long run damage, in my opinion. So uh, if altcoins were possible, uh, you would have actually an anti-fragile system. Uh, the problem with altcoins is that when Bitcoin was born, it was so little that uh, it was uh, ignored, but uh, and when it was known, it was so big that it was very difficult to attack. No altcoin can replicate that in a foreseeable future. If Bitcoin fails, every alternative will be compromised since day one, or will be just shut down immediately. It's very difficult to imagine a situation similar to Bitcoin. Also, the the, the disappointment and the delusion will uh, the, the 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 broken delusion will will play a role in the trust of the next system. So I don't think it's possible to create a new Bitcoin. That said, there are there are different problems with an altcoin. One of these problems is distribution of the initial wealth. Uh, four coins, uh, like the result of splits, they have a better. Uh, wealth distribution that pure altcoin. They are more legit on that point of view. If uh, in my personal in my personal uh, uh, rankings, I would say that the the most scammy thing that you can do is uh, is a new altcoin with a new uh, token to to bootstrap economically, a new proof of work to bootstrap technically, a new code base to bootstrap. Uh, I mean, computer science wise. Uh, and uh, and that's the, the, the that's actually you are you are just destroying all the network effects of Bitcoin and the new capitalization of course. While if you do for example merge mining, you like uh, Namecoin did, you are saving one network effect. If you are doing um, a split, you are saving at least one other network effect. Of course, the best way to split the value will be. Uh, two-way packed side chains where you can opt in, switch between different Bitcoin implementation, conserving the market cap, the market depth, the price with minor with minor arbitrage, of course. While uh, uh, the fork is like uh, a diverging price. I mean, it's a very complicated uh, question, so so the answer should take a lot of time. But I think that a, for, a honest fork coin is better than an altcoin. Uh, unless it's used as a phishing attack, so you promote it as Bitcoin in order to create confusion and to steal other kind of uh, network effects. So we have uh, the time for last question. Uh, hi, maybe this is a bit of a follow-up for the previous question. Uh, is, do you think there's a possibility of a market-based attack on Bitcoin where you know the bad actors don't uh, interact with the Bitcoin system, they just manipulate the prices through like the futures markets? And, uh, you know, maybe if uh, Bitcoin cost $400 today and Bcash cost $4,000 today, people would have different opinions about, you know, which fork is the right one. Uh, you can manipulate uh, the, the market. You can always, in every kind of market, uh, but it's not, uh, un you cannot do that indefinitely, forever and, uh, and uh, to infinite. You can do that usually following trend, or you can do that against trend, but but burning a lot of money in doing that. So if governments ca could manipulate everything always, they would just avoid uh, when they create a, a subprime housing uh, mortgage uh, bubble. They will try to prevent the burst, but they can't. They can just they can just pump, but when the, the bubble bursts, they cannot do anything with uh, interest rates. They manipulate interest rates, 
then interest rates explode, or inflation. They play with inflation, but when inflation explodes, they cannot stop it in Zimbabwe, they cannot stop it in, uh, in uh, Weimar Republic, they cannot stop it anywhere else. So, um, uh, of course, they can manipulate short-term and up to a limit Bitcoin price in order to take it down or to, or to, or to pump it up. But uh, if they are against the real trend, uh, the, the cost of doing that will diver diverge over time. And even if they can print money, uh, they cannot do that without consequences. Otherwise, we would have the we would have the the, the, the receipt for uh, happiness for everybody. Okay, one more question, mine. Uh, how do you see uh, the Segwit 2x attack will play out? According to how do you see the situation? Uh, yeah, I, I partially uh, answered. Uh, I, I I don't know. Uh, I really don't know. I think that the most uh, probable scenario is a scenario in which major responsible player with strong economic uh, interest will uh, find a way to save face like they did uh, with uh, UA UASF. Yeah, they, they save it face uh, just merging BIP91 uh, in order to not uh, suffer the UASF. They will try something like that. They will try, I don't think that is in the interest of digital currency group to actually move the business over an altcoin. Uh, so they will probably withdraw partially, ambiguously, delaying, while some people like the developers, like uh, Garzik or whatever, uh, I don't see for them strong incentives to back, back off right now. Uh, they will probably go uh, and to create their altcoins because, I mean, it's, that's what other people did in the past. Okay, thank you, Giacomo.